In this section, we'll talk about respiratory disorders. And these respiratory disorders, that means there are certain conditions which affect the respiratory system. They are categorized into three main heads. First are infectious respiratory disorders. In which we include all those diseases which are caused due to some kind of a pathogen. And that pathogen could be a bacterium or a virus. In this, we discuss or we take certain examples like tuberculosis. TB is an infectious respiratory disorder. Then pertussis. Uh, this is also a respiratory disorder. Pneumonia. This is also an infection which uh, or the pathogens in these cases, they affect uh, the respiratory uh, tract. The next one, diphtheria. These are certain common respiratory diseases which come under infectious diseases. The details of these diseases we discuss in the chapter of uh, human health and diseases. Second category of respiratory disorders are tumors or lung cancer. In this, the most common thing is because of a carcinogen, if there is some kind of a tumor which is formed in the lungs or respiratory uh, tract. And one such substance which is known to cause cancer in lungs is benzpyrene, which is a carcinogen. Like benzpyrene, which is present in tobacco smoke, which is considered as a carcinogen responsible for lung cancer. The third category of respiratory disorders are called obstructive respiratory disorders in which we talk about allergies, bronchitis, asthma, emphysema, etc. So we will take all of these one by one in detail. The first one, allergies. <coughs> Allergies are defined or any kind of allergy is defined as hypersensitivity of a person to an allergen. Allergen is that substance which causes allergies. Now what are the most common allergens, the most common substances? are dust, pollen grains, some food items, some chemicals. Some people are allergic to some kind of food items. Like somebody might have the allergy due to milk protein. Some people are allergic to certain cosmetics. Dust is the most common allergen. Some people are allergic to pollen grains. An allergy of pollen grain is known as hay fever. We'll write that down a little later. The symptoms of allergies are pretty much common and there are three steps in which these symptoms they manifest. First step is stimulation by an allergen which is known as sensitization. And this stimulation by that allergen is happening for the first time. So which is the first stimulation. In this case, which we call sensitization, what happens is the allergen triggers formation of antibodies. And these antibodies bind to mast cells which are present in 
the connective tissue. This happens in the first entry of that allergen and these reactions are normally milder. The second step is the second stimulation. What happens when this allergen enters the body? Now the next time and consecutive times. First time whenever an allergen enters, the step is known as sensitization. What happens is, this allergen is actually acting as an antigen. It is also acting as an antigen. And that is why this antibody synthesis or formation takes place. These antibodies, they bind to mast cells and they are there in our body. Now, second time when that same allergen enters, second time or consecutive times, what is going to happen is, this same allergen now is going to bind with these antibodies, which are, or sorry, these mast cells which are stimulated or attached with antibodies. So, allergen binds to mast cells which are stimulated or attached with antibodies. So, now what has happened so far is if we just uh, explain it using uh, a simple diagrammatic representation. The allergen, say for example, we are representing by a circle and we know antibodies, they are the Y-shaped structures, the immunoglobulins. So because of this allergen, these antibodies are formed. If this is the mast cell, the antibodies are attached to these mast cells. So this mast cell is stimulated or is attached with the antibody. Now we are talking about the same type of the mast cell. Now when this allergen enters the next time, it comes and binds with this mast cell which is already attached to the antibodies. And as soon as this happens, the mast cells rupture and rupturing of mast cell releases histamine and this histamine is responsible for the allergic reaction. So now step number three is histamine action. And histamine action we know is there can be inflammation, running nose, watery eyes, irritation in the throat. These kind of reactions they take place due to histamine. And that is why in treatment of allergic antihistaminic drugs are taken. So symptoms include inflammation, running nose, Watery eyes, sneezing, etc. These are some common symptoms in most of the allergies. So what happens when a person gets allergy? What exactly is this allergy? And uh, you must have uh, seen that some people are allergic to a particular thing. Say if we are talking about dust. Some people are allergic to dust and some people are not. So what is the difference? The difference lies here. It is hypersensitivity. Some people are more sensitive to certain substances. So hypersensitivity of a person to those kind of substances is allergy. And those substances which are responsible for this reaction, they are known as the allergens. This complete process or this reaction takes place in three steps. First time stimulation with the antigen which is known as sensitization where this allergen acts as a mild antigen. Antibodies are formed and they attach to the mast cells. After this whenever the same allergen enters 
it binds with the same mast cells which are attached to those antibodies. And because of this, mast cells rupture releasing this histamine. And third is whatever happens because of this histamine. So this is how allergies are seen or these are the most common symptoms. If we talk about treatment, then antihistaminic drugs are taken. The reason is all those symptoms are caused due to histamine. So any drug or chemical which can reduce the effect of histamine would help in curing the disease or curing that condition. And that is why those drugs are known as antihistaminic. One more important thing here is hay fever. This is allergy due to pollen grains. Allergy due to pollen grains. This is specific. It is allergy only but it has been given a specific name. Otherwise, uh, other uh, allergies are simply called allergies. Except for this hay fever which is due to pollen grains. Now after this, let us talk about some more diseases or conditions under this obstructive respiratory disorders. After uh, allergies, the next category under obstructive respiratory disorder would be asthma. In asthma, there is spasm of bronchi. Bronchial spasm. And bronchial spasm means that those tubes which are carrying the air into the lungs, they undergo spasm. That means they contract. And when they contract, the lumen decreases. And if the lumen decreases, then breathing becomes heavy or difficult. So lumen of bronchi decreases. That condition is asthma. There, there is wheezing. That means when the person starts breathing in these conditions, the person has to exert more because now the pipes, those tubes which are taking the air into the lungs, they have become narrower. So there is wheezing, heavy breathing. These kind of problems are seen in asthma. A similar uh, symptom showing condition is known as bronchitis. Bronchitis is normally considered as allergic bronchitis. In case of asthma also as well as bronchitis, the stimulants, the things which are going to cause these conditions are pretty much same. Here also it could be because of cold weather, it could be because of dust, it could be because of any such kind of allergen. In case of bronchitis also it is the most common thing that triggers this condition is say dust, pollen or all these things. In this case there is again wheezing, heavy breathing, The difference between the two is here there is spasm. Here spasm is not that uh, predominant symptom. The difference, one difference, major difference here is in case of asthma, sputum is more. Whereas in case of bronchitis, there is no or negligible sputum. But in both these conditions, there is heavy breathing. The person finds it very difficult because of this passage getting uh, narrower. The next condition is emphysema. Emphysema or emphysema in which the alveolar surface, that means the surface area through which gaseous exchange takes place, is reduced. So here there is reduction in alveolar respiratory surface. And one major reason why this happens is again tobacco smoke. 
this is due to tobacco smoking. People who smoke, when they inhale, the smoke goes in and it gets deposited on the inner side of the alveoli. So if this is an alveolus and we know it is lined with simple squamous epithelia and this entire area is available for gaseous exchange. But if due to this smoke, some part gets deposited with the smoke, the surface area for exchange of gases has reduced and obviously if surface area is less exchange of gases would also be less so that condition is known as emphysema and it is mainly due to tobacco smoking another condition is known as hypoxia hypoxia is oxygen deficiency in tissues now, why this oxygen is deficient in the tissue? One reason could be carbon monoxide poisoning. We talked about uh, carbon monoxide binding with hemoglobin when we were talking about transport of gases. We said that carbon monoxide binds with hemoglobin to make a permanent complex known as oxyhemoglobin. And if that hemoglobin is permanently blocked, the amount of hemoglobin remaining to transport oxygen is less. So less oxygen is reaching up to the tissue and that is known as hypoxia. So these are certain uh, important conditions or disorders related to respiratory system. Now in the last segment, we will take up certain interesting things about our respiratory system.